Hey everybody, thank you for coming to check out this video. In this video, we will be talking about the configurations that we need to do on the IMU presence in order to get it integrated with the CUCM. Now, taking a look at the CCMP exam topics, if we look at the collaboration core, CL core exam topics, then uh, we have some IMP stuff down here. And then also, if we take a look at the CLICA exam topics, there's plenty of Jabber and IMU presence type of stuff on here since uh, this exam is specifically focused on apps. And moving on, if we take a look at the CCIE collaboration exam topics, you will see that I'm in presence is in here as well. And then there's some other stuff too that we won't be covering, but at least if you have it installed and you have it integrated and you have the baseline uh, configurations done, then should you decide to go ahead and do these other things, it's just uh, an easier starting point for you. We're going to start within the CCM. And we're going to go under System, and then we're going to go to Presence Redundancy Groups. Then once we're here, we'll click Find, and we have the default CUPS cluster here, so we'll go ahead and click on that. What we're really looking for here is, I'm just making sure that my present server, my primary present server is, li is listed here. I only have one, but if you did have a secondary, you'd want to go ahead and list it under here as well. Now let's go ahead and move on to the SIP trunk security profile. We'll go under System, Security, and then we'll go to SIP trunk security profile. Wait for that to load up, and um, we're going to click Find. And then we're going to look at this non-secure SIP trunk profile right here. Now we're not going to actually click on this part. I mean, we could, but then we'd have to click copy after the fact. I'm just going to click the copy button over here and I'm going to rename this to IMP. I'm going to leave almost everything the same except for these one, two, three, four buttons that have accept in the beginning. Those are the four accepts. So now let's go ahead and save this and it should say add successful, right? Uh, there is no trunk associated just yet, so we don't have to reset any trunks, but it doesn't say update, it says add successful that's because we copied the old and added a new one moving forward from here we're going to create a SIP profile and we'll do that under device device settings SIP profile and we'll click find here now for the standard SIP profile we're going to copy that and we'll also rename this one I'm just going to rename it to IMP SIP profile then let's scroll on down to the bottom and I want to have options ping enabled on my SIP trunk. Now this step isn't exactly necessary, but for me personally, I like to have the options ping enabled on all the different trunks. So um, I am going to go ahead and do this. And I like to have separate SIP uh, profiles associated with my different trunks because then I can manipulate the configurations on those, on those SIP profiles and do it in such a way that um, you know, it's only going to impact one trunk. So let's go ahead and save that. And now that we have our SIP trunk security profile as well as our SIP profile, we can move forward with actually um, configuring the trunk. I did not mean to click add new there. I meant to go under device trunk and then we can do add new here. And I'm going to do SIP trunk. Then I will click next. So here I'll give it a name and I'm going to name that IMP under, underscore SIP underscore trunk. All right, if I can just type correctly. And now that we have this renamed, I'm going to put it into the uh, San Jose device pool. Then I'm gonna scroll down to the destination area right here. And I will put the fully qualified domain name of my IMA presence server there. Now we want to put our SIP trunk security profile, the IMP SIP trunk uh, profile, and then the SIP profile as well. And at this point, we're ready to save the trunk configuration, but be mindful that after you save it, it's a new trunk. So we have to do a reset on that. All right, and so now we have that reset out of the way. From here, we're going to move on to uh, the user management drop-down menu but in here we're going to go to user settings and UC service. Then I don't believe there's any on this cluster yet. There are not. So we'll be adding new ones. And when we add them, these are going to be 
configurations that Jabber is going to use to know where to reach out to for specific services like voicemail, mail store, conferencing, directory, right? These are all different ones. We're going to do voicemail, uh, directory, I am in presence and CTI. But uh, what I'll do here is I'm just going to pause the recording. I'll do these configurations and then I'll show you my configurations for each one. But I'm, I'm just going to pause the recording so that you don't have to sit here and uh, sit through me doing it. Instead, you can just do it on your own based on what I'm about to show you after I've done it. So now, as you can see, I have five different UC services here. Two of them are CTI, and that's just so that I can have a redundancy between sub A and sub B. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the configurations here. Um, specifically, looking at the directory UC service, notice that I had changed the port to 3268. And I'll crack these open just so that people can take a look at them if, if they really would want to do that. So here's the CTI service for sub A. Here is the CTI service for sub B. Moving on, we have the directory UC service so that uh, through Jabber, people can look up other contacts and it will actually do a directory lookup. Now we have our I am in presence UC service. And then we also have our voicemail UC service so that uh, our Jabber client can be integrated with Unity Connection using this UC service. However, in order to make use of these UC services, Jabber needs to have a, uh, or I guess not really Jabber, but the end users need to have a profile that is associated with them. And we have yet to create that profile. So we go under user management, user settings, and then we go to the service profile. And then we'll create one here and we'll call it the um, UC service. I like to keep capital letters, UC service profile. Be sure to check that this is gonna be the default profile. You really don't have to, but um, it's, it's what I do. It's a, a preference of mine. And then for here, We'll do voicemail UC service, which is the only one we have. Make sure that, um, well, you don't really have to, but I choose to select uh, Unified CM I am in presence for the credential source. If you did not set, then inside of each and every single Jabber, you'll see that they cannot connect to the Unity connection and it will be due to that there's no, no password, right? So you each user would have to specify their password to be able to connect with the Unity connection. And so instead, we're going to just bypass all of that and select Unified CM I am in presence for that setting. Uh, we did not create a mail store profile. We did not create a conferencing profile either. We did create a directory profile. Um, and we created I am presence. We also created two CTI profiles here. So I think we're good here. We'll go ahead and click save. So now we're going to create an access control group, which is specific to our users, which will be making use of uh, Jabber right now. We don't really need to do this, but you know, there are times where maybe you want to do this. So we'll go under user management, user settings, and we'll go to access control group. Now I'm going to click add new and I'm going to name it uh, IMP underscore users access control group. And then I'll hit save. And now we will go to the related link section up here in the top right and we'll select assign role to access control group and then click go. Now on this page, we want to click on assign role to group. So I'm gonna make this bigger, hit find, and then I'm gonna hit control F here. And I want to look for standard, if I can spell, CTI enabled. And then I'm going to do uh, standard CTI, allow control of phone support and connect to transfer and conference, as well as the one for rollover mode. And lastly, I want the uh, standard CCM and users. So I think that's all the four that we want. 
At this point, I will click Add Selected, and we have our four right here. Now I'll click Save. And so now we have an access control group that we can assign to users that uh, we really don't want them having too many privileges, but we want them to be able to use Jabber. Now at this point, let's go ahead and configure our devices. We'll go under Device, Phone, and then we're going to say Add New. And when I was going for my CCIE, I was trying to do everything as fast as I could when I was going through the pages. So I didn't want to scroll through here and look for the phones. I would actually just go like this uh, and start typing in what I was looking for, and then I'd hit enter. So for those that uh, are looking for the, the where the CSF is, it's going to be this one, the Cisco Unified Client Services Framework, with CSF meaning Client Services Framework. So let's go ahead and hit next. And uh, for this, I'm going to make it CFF, CSF user one, oh, not exclamation mark, but a, a one there. And now we're going to give it uh, the required fields and then also at least one other that's not a required field. So device pool required field, phone button template required field, uh, common phone profile, I'll leave that. Calling search space is one of the ones that's not required that I will be using. Um, the location, I'm going to put in the San Jose location for the user, user one, since this uh, CSF is for user one. And then let's scroll on down a little further to where we can do the SIP profile. We're going to do standard SIP profile, device security profile. I am going to do standard non secure SIP profile. And I believe at this point we are ready to hit save. This is actually a pretty cool field that I won't be talking too much about right now, but uh, it will allow you to use uh, multiple different Jabber config files, whereas without it, uh, the, all the Jabber devices are going to use the same Jabber. Um, uh, what's the name of it? Jabber hyphen config dot XML. Uh, if I remember, if I remember it correctly, let me see. Uh, Jabber Cisco support field. Um, yeah, jabber-config.xml, and, and this is where you can set some parameters. I'm really not going to get into it. Uh, I already feel myself getting pulled in that direction. I want to talk about it because I find it to be a very cool field, but uh, if you wanted to know more about it, just go ahead and go and look it up. Um, for now, we're just looking to get it to where I am in presence is having a baseline integration and um, then you can play more with it as as you please to or as you come across things in your study so that way you have your baseline lab if you're reading a book or you're you're, you're reading a blog or just looking through cisco docs or whatever and something isn't fully clicking for you at least you have your lab to go and dig in a little further that's really the point of these videos that i'm doing here anyway we're going to give this the directory number 1000 because if i remember correctly that is the directory number that is associated with user one so let's put that in the internal partition. And uh, I didn't give any caller ID or anything like that, but I am relatively sure that 1000 was for user one, 2000 was for user two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click save on this, but we are going to make another configuration here on this page at the very bottom where it says associate end user we are going to associate user one and what that does is you have to look at every device and line integration or sorry um association as a unique association so 1000 directory number 1000 in the internal partition is also associated with this phone it's also associated with this jabber device right and so down here at the bottom, we are associating this de this device and this um, line, right? That that unique combination with user one. So let's go ahead and hit save, and then let's go over here and take a look at uh, edit line appearance on this device. And scroll to the bottom, and as you can see. 
there's no user associated with the with the line, even though we just did it on the other device. That's because each association between a device and a line is unique, and we can associate a different end user with this. Um, but I'm not I'm not going to go into all that, right? So let's just jump over to the CSF again. We'll do the edit line appearance. Um, and you can see that our user is associated. So now let's go about creating a device for uh, user two so that they have a CSF as well. In order to do that, all I'm gonna do here is just hit copy and then we're going to make a couple of changes here. This will be user two. We'll actually change it to be user two is here, here as well. And then, um, if I remember correctly, that was the only stuff that was user specific within the config. So we'll hit save. And then we'll give it a directory number. We'll make that directory number 2000 in the internal partition. We've got none internal partition here. And let's go ahead and uh, save that now that the page had refreshed. Now let's scroll down to the bottom and associate the end user, user two. Actually, what you can see, see here is um, the meeting number that's on the end users page. So yeah, 2000 is with user two, 1000 is with user one. We'll hit add selected and do another save on that. At this point, we are ready to move on to the I'm in presence side of the house. And we're going to go into presence and then we're going to go to gateways. And now uh, we can hit fine, but there's, there's nothing here. So we'll hit add new. We're going to leave it as CUCM and I'm going to do uh, HQCUCM pub. And then let's go ahead and get the uh, publishers fully qualified domain name, HQCCM pub. Then I'll put that right there and we'll hit save on that. Now we'll move on to creating the CCM CIP profile, which will be under application and then CCM CIP profile. Now there shouldn't be one here, so we'll just hit add new. And then I'm going to just name it CCM CIP profile. And then I'm not giving it any description, but I will put the sub A as the primary, and then we'll do sub B as the secondary. Now, another thing I'm going to do here is just any certificate because it's a lab environment, I don't care. And I'm going to make this the default uh, CCM CIP profile for the system. So now I'll click save. And because I made that the default, there should be users that show up for users in profile. Now let's go ahead and uh, refresh the page real quick. You see they, they still don't show up and if I hit add users to the profile and then I hit find, um, well I'm surprised that uh, user two is even showing up. So I must have done something different there. But let's go on back over to the CUCM here so I can show you something. If we go under user, management, user settings, or sorry, user management and user. And we have user one here who did not show up. We're gonna select home cluster and we're gonna select enable user for unified CMI and presence. And then I'm going to leave in the uh, use system default for the UC service profile, which is uh, what you see we made earlier. And apparently I had a typo that I didn't notice until now. I'm just going to keep that and uh, let's now go to user two to see if they had, yeah, well that's weird that they even showed up. Anyway, um, we'll hit these two here and again, we'll leave the system default. And then now if I go back over here to the CCM profile and just hit save, user one came through, but user two didn't. I, I, you know, th there's something weird going on here. I'm not sure why that's going on. Let me go back and make sure that I saved user two. I'm going to uncheck this, save it again, check it. 
save it again because there is something weird going on there all right I think something just maybe got out of sync a little bit and we had to uh, kick it around a little to to get it back where we needed it but anyway the end of the story is that we have it the way we want it to, to look this is what we wanted right here now if we did not check this box make this the default we would have had to hit add, add users and add these guys in manually at this point let's now move over to the unity connection and we'll sign in here and then once this loads up we're going to go in the left pane all the way down to the bottom and then we're going to locate LDAP and hit the uh, expansion button. And then we're going to go into LDAP authentication. And we're going to use the same user, the uh, distinguished user that uh, we used on CUCM side. Let's see if I can just, no, I'm not going to be that lucky. Okay, so I will go under the CUCM and we'll go to LDAP and we'll do LDAP authentication here. And then I'm just going to copy this stuff out and get it put over to the Unity connection, but I'll pause the recording for a little while while I do it. Now I have this filled out. We're going to click on this part or just hover, up, hover over it and hit Save LDAP Authentication. And then we have that done on the Unity connection side. At this point, we're good. We have all of our configurations done, you know, quote unquote, all of our configurations done. It's time to test logging into Jabber, which I'm going to do that in a different video. And something that I want you to know is that there are configurations that need to be done for DNS on our Windows server, which were done in the early, early stages of this uh, lab guide that I'm putting together. Those were things like uh, looking up the Cisco UDS service and, and whatnot. Now, um, the other thing I want you to know is that I know for a fact that there are going to be troubleshooting opportunities logging into Jabber and I did that on purpose so that we can do a little bit of troubleshooting in our next video when we're logging in maybe pull some Jabber PRTs take a look through them see what's going on there um, and then eventually make it to where we get a successful login to Jabber we can ping from one Jabber client to another uh, maybe make a phone call from one Jabber to a client to the other check voicemails all of those good things but again uh, you before you go logging into Jabber you may want to watch the other video that I'm about to make where uh, I go and try to log in and show some troubleshooting anyway I hope there's been some value in this video for you and I'll see you in the next one